Hi everyone, today I'm going to completely overhaul my altar space and I'm going to take you along with me and hopefully this will help to inspire you or uh, get you out of an altar rut if you also are feeling like your altar is stale and it needs a refresh and you want some ideas on how to do this and how to change things up and ex get excited again about your sacred space. I figured I would introduce you to Lemur today. Uh, this is my betta fish. I got him a month ago. His name is Lemur because he's blue. Maybe just figure that out yourself. Hint, Lemur Ebola, give it a Google. Uh, yeah, it's a dad joke. My dad came up with that name. Uh, but yeah, I figured that I would uh, showcase him in this video. He sits right beside my desk here, beside my bookcase, and uh, just chills out with me as I work. It's really nice. Essentially, I have been working with the same altar setup for the past four years or so. It's been working for me okay, and I've been um, pretty happy with the look of it, and it's been nice to have a consistency around how I change my altar at the seasons and so on. And almost at each Sabbath, there's always a little change with the setup that I have. Uh, but it's gotten to the point now where I feel like it's not really reflective of where I'm at right now with my spirituality. I want change, I want to be trying new things, and although I I created a witchy altar for myself separate to my main altar recently. I haven't used it as much as I hoped I would and it feels it's starting to feel a bit wrong that the two are so separate from one another uh, even though they're right next to one another they feel quite separated and I felt like it was time to come up with completely reconceptualize my altar space essentially to just better reflect where I'm at and how I'm feeling not only these days and these years on my spirituality but also specifically right now and um, because this altar setup may or may not be something that I keep for a very long time it's just how I'm feeling right now in midsummer 2021. So I'm going to take you along the whole journey with me. You can watch me deconstruct the altar and put it all back together and I'll talk to you as I go and uh, maybe especially at the end about the changes that I made, about what I chose to add to it and uh, how it's different and how I'm feeling about it and what I think this is going to do to my spiritual practice going forward because that is, that's the big hope. I mean, I think personally that an altar Obviously the aesthetic is important, it's nice to be looking at something that is visually exciting and inspiring, but to me it's not even mostly about the aesthetic, it's mostly about what that aesthetic or what that look and feel actually produces in us and how our practice and our habits and our ceremonies at the altar change based on what is on our altar and uh, how it's arranged and what the focus is and so on. I think that has a huge effect on the actual practices that we tend to gravitate towards. So I'm excited to change things up. So this is what I've been working with up until now. If you've watched my previous videos about my altars or follow me on Instagram, you're gonna be very familiar with this particular layout. I've been using this altar structure for probably three or maybe even four years at this stage. And it has served me very well. I really like all the different components. If you're interested in hearing more about them, I'm going to link um, up in the top right hand corner um, the video where I uh, described to you and showed you and talked about uh, the bigger version of this that I had uh, in my apartment in Edinburgh. Uh, but uh, suffice to say, the primary components of this altar are the, the dual candle system, with which used to be more of a creation, destruction, dark and light dichotomy for me, uh, a binary, I suppose, uh, but it over time has, that's diminished to some degree on my altar. And then there's a central candle to represent goddess or uh, cosmos, um, pantheistic divinity in general, it's representing the whole. Uh, then I've got the circle of stones around the periphery that represent eight, the eight Sabbaths and the wheel of the year, and I like to turn them, I move them uh, at each Sabbath. So uh, the stone, the orange stone, the or the carnelian uh, in the front there is the stone that I associate with Midsummer, and then I, I turn the circle um, at each Sabbath. I have my prayer beads as usual, I have my uh, matryoshka doll, which is a great symbol for me of the fractal nature of the universe, which is really evocative for me of my uh, pantheistic beliefs. I've got um, something from my ancestors, something from my uh, grandparents, and a crow skull just to represent death and destruction and the Morrigan and, and the, the dark side of, of reality. And then of course, in, in center place, I have my print by Audre Eau Claire 
which for me I use to represent the, the light half of the year. Uh, the altar cloth I've been using for a very, very long time. It's reversible, so it's uh, red on one side, black on the other, and I reverse that as well as the year goes by. And I swap out the candle holders as well to a dark, uh, darker version. And I've been relatively happy with this, at least in theory, with this layout. I like, I started um, mixing up how I switched out my alternates on the altar. So the altar cloth that reverses, the candle holders that switch to a dark version and the picture which switches to a different uh, darker, well, I suppose more Morrigan oriented picture. And um, I started staggering that across uh, Lunasa, uh, the Equinox and Samhain, and then again across Imolk at the Equinox and Bealtaine, so that I have a different altar set up for almost every single uh, Sabbath. Um, and then of course I've got my prayer beads that I swap out uh, for each uh, season. And I have my summer Kernunas ones out at the moment. That served me quite well and I like the structure of that. I like how it means that I can have a changing, evolving altar across the year without having to think about it too hard. I always know what's coming next and it does tap me into that feeling of um, where, I, where I am in space and time. But I've just been finding it quite uninspiring. And um, there is another component to the altar down below this that you that isn't in frame. Um, if you have seen this altar before in its entirety, it's a little cupboard basically that with the doors taken off and the, there's a low shelf underneath that I have often used as a second part of the altar and often it's a more private part. I will drape a scarf over it so that other people can't see it necessarily and it's more private. I've been using that for my uh, forays into witchcraft, my witchcraft practice, and also just to represent that part of my spirituality. Uh, but to be completely honest, I'm not entirely satisfied with that either. It hasn't really been drawing me to the altar and neither of these setups really have been. So what I want to do today is to dismantle the whole thing, I think, and I want to change it up as much as I possibly can. Now, there will be a lot of the same components will end up on the finished version because I only have a certain amount of stuff. I'm not going to go out and buy all new stuff to do this or anything like that. Um, I'm just going to use what I have. But I think I just want to root out. I've been digging through drawers and finding things that I haven't used in a long time and things that are, are, are particularly beautiful to me and evocative to me of the kind of spirituality I want to have moving forward. Um, I have thought that splitting my altar this way into a more a uh, sanitized version, I suppose, on the top and then a more witchy version on the bottom. I had thought that that would represent accurately my feelings around my practice and my actual practices as well, that I would have more um, naturalistic practices and then more witchy mystical practices and that each part, each altar would essentially serve a different purpose. But I'm not loving that. I'm actually thinking that I might mix it all together a bit more uh, let it all get jumbled up together and stop trying to make that distinction.
Okay, I'm really starting to make progress here. I'm getting pretty happy with this. The top has turned out to be even more minimalistic than I was anticipating or planning, but I actually really, really like it. Um, I'm really happy about putting that, I don't know how well you can see it, I'm gonna turn the, the brightness down a bit so that you can see it. I'll, I'll add some B-roll anyway to show you what I'm talking about. I'm really happy to having that little uh, bottle in the middle as a centerpiece. Uh, this is something I picked up in Edinburgh one time. Uh, I have always had a fascination with jars and bottles and for some reason have never actually formed a collection of them. And when I found this in a charity shop in Edinburgh, I just knew it had to come home with me. I really love it. And uh, there's something inherently witchy to me about a glass, a beautiful glass bottle or jar. I mean, I know so many of us keep so many jars full of things and that's something I used to do more as a baby witch in my teens. And it's something I wanna get into more. So I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this yet. I might put something in it that I anoint myself with on a daily basis, or I might make more of a witch bottle. I actually, I think I'm almost certainly going to put something in it with which to anoint myself because I don't wanna put anything into it that I'm not gonna be able to readily get back out again. Um, but I am considering getting into things like witch bottles and witch jars and things like that. And um, I used to do a lot of work with pouches and uh, putting together little totems and so on. That was my main form of spell work, it really was always putting things in things <laughs> and um, either carrying them on my person or feeding them over time, that kind of thing. And I really wanna get back into that. Uh, I tried using boxes for a while and that didn't really work for me. So I've actually removed any boxes. Um, I've, I'm mostly using the boxes on this altar for just height. Um, I do occasionally like to shove something in a box as part of a spell or just to keep something safe, an intention, a spell, um, a, just a, something, a, a prayer. Uh, but for the most part, I don't really find boxes to be that evocative. Anyway, the lower half, I'm not sure about yet. Uh, I feel like it needs a bit more work. Um, the colors on the top and the bottom, unfortunately, don't really match, but I'm quite liking that red-blue thing going on on the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix up that backdrop. My idea with that backdrop, actually, was that I might create a shrine behind it. Probably a Morrigan shrine is what I'm gonna create behind there. And that's something that I'm never gonna show on camera. It's gonna be something that is private to me. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with the lower half as well. I wasn't totally sure what to put as the centerpiece down there, but I'm really liking the symmetry of the bottle and then the, uh, well, what, it's actually an oil burner technically, but I use it to burn herbs and resins and so on. Um, it's just a bit of tin foil in top of uh, what used to be an oil burner. There was a tray on top that came out and the tray got cracked and then I started using it to burn things like that. But it's, it's something that I use a lot in my devotion. It's something I use an awful lot at the altar. Anytime I do ritual, I will burn herbs or something uh, in that little tray. And I realized that actually that should be the center of my altar, of my working altar. I'm kind of thinking of that bottom part still as being a bit more witchy. But now that I'm looking at the top and bottom together though, I'm starting to see that it's not really so much the bottom being witchier than the top. It's more to do with the bottom being um, more representative of the darker, more mysterious, mystical, uh, you know, the destructive side of the creative destructive binary to an extent. Certainly the mysterious, the mystical, the I suppose leaning more towards the witchy in the top is leaning more towards uh, the naturalistic, but um, there's something in the aesthetic that has actually come out similar to what I had before, but I'm okay with that. And what I like about it is that there's more of an emphasis on the binary of light and dark on the top and the bottom. Um, I would say that, that in creating this, I allowed myself to be very free and I allowed myself to not place items thinking symbolically, but thinking aesthetically. And I was reaching for things that felt right, specifically at this time of year, right now in this moment. Um, I also reached for things that I knew I would use every day. I have a really good feeling about this, that it's going to revitalize my actual practice because I think when you're using the same 
visual elements of an altar um, for many months or years at a time, uh, your practice itself starts to stagnate in my experience because you're reaching for the same things. You're not, even if you have lots of different tools at, to hand, if they're not, if they're all in the same places and if they're not readily reachable or if you're just, you just never think of doing something new, of breaking out of what it is that you normally do at the altar. And I feel like this new setup has highlighted some items that have either been more hidden on my altar or haven't been on my altar at all. And it's going to give me an opportunity to experiment, to play, to have fun with trying out different um, ritual gestures, ceremonial gestures as a way to express where I'm at spiritually right now. So there you have it. I'm really excited to use this altar. I'm really excited to see what it does for my practice going forward. And I'm really enjoying this feeling of freedom that I've had in the last few years where I can actually put things away and not use them for a while, um, where I can try out new things and uh, see if it works, see if the new item or the new symbol on my altar makes sense. And if it doesn't, then scrap it and, and try again, just start again. I think I'm a lot less precious these days about uh, what my altar is and what it is not and how it looks and what it's managing to encompass. And I think I've let go of feeling like it needs to be all encompassing and needs to be representing every single thing that is important to me and every single part of my understanding of the world and my worldview. And I think that can get a bit overwhelming. I think it's a lot more useful to my mind to focus on representing the main things that are important to me right now spiritually. And one of the things that wasn't represented on my altar that I wanted to bring in was a connection to nature, a connection to um, the world outside, to the garden outside my door, outside my window specifically, which is feels so close to me out here in this garden office. Um, I am very, I'm spending a lot of time in my garden these days, especially with COVID, I'm spending a lot of time at home and we've had nice weather this summer. So I've been outside a lot and I've been paying a lot of attention to the changes in the garden, the flowers, the roses. And I wanted to bring that into the altar and you know I've been keeping plants and obviously now I started keeping fish and I wanted to represent that on the altar as well that I have been having a more taking a more hands-on approach I suppose to uh cultivating a small part of nature in my own home and so I wanted to have a plant a live plant on my altar which I've actually never done before and making space for those things required removing a lot of other more witchy knickknacks um, but that feels right to me right now it, it feels like those extra crystals and tools and uh, candles and so on right now for me feel a little bit superfluous uh, and that's that's really exciting it's really fun it means that I can actually take my focus onto something new so I hope this was interesting to you and helpful for you if you are also um, going through this uh, phase of feeling a bit stagnant spiritually, feeling like something needs to be shaken up. If you are feeling like you need some help or some guidance as you work through creating an altar or sacred space for yourself, if you're trying to uh, spruce things up, jazz things up for yourself, uh, find your feet spiritually right now and you're looking for a bit of guidance, um, then do consider maybe getting some spiritual mentoring from me. I will leave a link to the information in the down bar and you can just go to onyaorga.com to find out more. So thanks a million for watching and uh, yeah, as always, I will be talking to you again soon.